and welcome to another episode of Your Chamber at Work. I'll be your host, Stacy Bruzzese, and on this episode, I'm excited to have three fantastic local business people as my guest. First up is Alan Boisvert, owner and chef, Keon's Bistro, right here in downtown Haverhill. Welcome, Alan. Hi, Stacy. How are you today? I'm great. How about you? Good. Very Excellent. Good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, so, Keon's Bistro, kind of a, a pillar of the downtown here in Haverhill. Everybody knows you're here, or, or it seems like everybody knows you're here. Um, but really, when you think about it, you haven't been here that long. No, yeah, we've been uh, we're on our 10th year. 10th year, yeah. exciting. Tell us, for the viewers at home, tell us a little bit more about the style of restaurant and uh, the type of experience they could expect to have when they come. Sure. Yeah, it's, uh, um, Keon's is an American bistro with a French foundation. So when I say that, it means uh, everything's made from scratch, everything's made on property. We do all our own sauces, soups, stocks, we, you know, from roasting the bones to finish. Our demi-glaze takes three and a half days to make. That's why it's so good, that's what's on the filet. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's uh, very creative with, again, fresh, and we try to lo use local ingredients in the summertime as much as we possibly can. And do you have, uh, speaking of summertime, do you have outside dining at all? We do. We've, uh, we put that in a couple of years ago. Uh, we have an outside patio that seats, have, we have four different tables out there. Uh, and it's really nice, especially downtown, Washington Street with the historic feel. It's great to be sitting outside at night having a nice meal. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, you are located on Washington Street up near... Uh, the train. Correct. Right? Yeah, we're 105 Washington Street. Uh, I always say directly across from the tap. I always give them a, a, a prop just because that's where everybody knows where the tap is. Another pillar, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, another pillar, and they're great people. So. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So um, I am looking at this fabulous new menu that you recently created. And who knew that tapas was going to become such a big seller? I didn't. Uh, we had decided to do a tapas week. And uh, we had such a great response from it. I talked to Chef and I said, well, listen, you know, why don't we just leave the tapas menu so we've got 13 or 14 different appetizers for our people to choose from and we'll still have the entrees that they're always expecting, whether it be the filet, the three brothers, the pork chop. Everyone loves the pork Everybody chop. Everybody loves the pork uh, chop. And of course, our pants here at Scallops. Right. So uh, we figured out a way to make it all work. Well, I am truly impressed and will definitely be coming for dinner. Thank but um, <clears throat> looking at all of these great selections, chilled blackened shrimp, prosciutto cigars, tenderloin crostini, roasted beet. Yeah. Oh, the roasted Tur beet terrine. Terrine. That's oh, a layered uh, golden beets with goat cheese and herbs. And then we layer it and then we cut it so it ends up actually in a square. And we'll put julienne pear so it comes out. It almost looks like a package with a bow on top. It's How, kind beautiful. Of yeah, really How beautiful. How beautiful. It, it sounds even delicious, it too. So you mentioned using fresh ingredients. What's the inspiration for, you know, many of these tapas dishes? Uh, just uh, my the history I've had in the cooking industry. I just take ideas from where I've been. I've been fortunate enough to travel the world. I worked in Germany, California, Texas, Ohio, New York, and Florida, and I've just taken what I've learned from some of the chefs that have trained me throughout the years and and kind of uh, implemented some of the dishes that way. Excellent. And you're sourcing all of the stuff as locally as possible. As locally as possible, whenever I can. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Um, I know that you have uh, some some options for those with special dietary needs Absolutely. too. Absolutely. You'll notice an asterisk on our menu all over the menu. Those are gluten free. Uh, I would say about 70% of our menu is either is or can be prepared gluten free. Uh, we're always cognizant of food allergies, whether it be, uh, again, the gluten, seafood. Uh, we had one woman at a wine dinner this past Sunday. She's allergic to black pepper. It was the first time I had ever wow. heard of that. Uh, but she told us in advance. So we knew, this was for a wine dinner, sure. so we knew and we had, her, she was able to eat the same food as everybody else without having to worry about her allergies. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's so important this day and age. There's, it absolutely It seems like is. there's so many people with, uh, you know, either a, an aversion to gluten or um, dairy, yeah. nuts. Dairy and nuts are, are, are big as well. And, right. Uh, so when I'm writing menus, I will try to keep a balance where I don't have too many dishes that would have nuts in it, especially. Sure. And most of my dishes, if it has dairy, I can we can make it without dairy to order. That's so, excellent. Yeah, just have to tell your waitress in advance. We'll take right. care of you. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more about this eggplant rollatini because I've seen that at other places, but 
Never described like this. This sounds like a, it is a unique really good. version. It's a nice thin layer of eggplant that we slowly roast off and then we'll put in the filling with the uh, fresh mozzarella and, and spinach and herbs and spices. And, and not fried. Not fried. Every exactly. place else and it's fries Exactly. It, yeah. And it's not breaded either. So again, it's a little bit healthier version. Nice. With this tapas menu, you'll notice there are quite a few healthy options on it. I, I absolutely do yeah. because I'm a very healthy eater and can be somewhat picky. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm healthier a eater now. <laughs> Anybody that's out there, any of you viewers that have known me for years know that I used to look like the Michelin Man and I'm eating healthier now, so I designed my menus to, that I can eat everything and still, you know, walk around looking a little better. <laughs> well, you look great. Thank you. And I, for one, appreciate having a menu like this, but I do know that a lot of people are trying to um, watch what they eat, not for weight reasons, but more so for a healthy heart for health, and, yeah. and just, yeah. you know, healthy lifestyle in general. So. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. You mentioned a wine dinner. Tell us a little bit more about Yeah, we host those. a wine dinner uh, the third Sunday of every month. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a five course meal. The first four courses come with wine. The last course is a flavored martini. And that's served in a little port wine sure. glass. So, you know, we're not, you don't need a wheelbarrow to get you out, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of food, let me tell you. It sounds great. It is. Um, and again, they're all good sized portions. In the first three courses, we kind of, it starts at six o'clock and we know people are hungry. So the first two or three courses come out at a pretty good clip, you know, not real. We don't rush you, but then we'll give you about a 25 minute break in between to kind of digest everything and socialize with your friends. And then uh, we finish it up with the entree and dessert. That's excellent. And what day of the week do you do it's that? It's the third Sunday of the third month. Third Sunday. It's $69 per person. For Again, it's for a five course meal. Uh, it works out really good. A lot of people love it. They do sell out quite, a, uh, quite in advance. Last month was actually sold out the day I had finished the wine dinner the previous month because we have so many people that rebook. Oh. So it's just a good idea to give us a call. Kind of like a little club. <laughs> it is. It yeah. really is. I have some members that are members. <laughs> I have some guests that have coming for seven or eight years in a row every single wine dinner. That's yeah. fabulous. It's well, great. I hope I can sneak in one of these. Oh, I would love to have yeah. you. And it's always, you know, it's, give us a call. It's always you have great. a great wine yeah. list anyway. We so do. for those that don't make it to a wine dinner, yeah. you have so, you offer some great pairings we for do. the for the foods on your menu. Yeah, we do. It's a, it's a nice wine and we don't you're not going to get the $400 bottle cuz that's not we don't really we found that right. there wasn't a call for that. But we have a lot of very good uh, recently priced reasonably priced wines uh, with a good variety. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. And to our viewers at home, thank you for watching this segment and I urge you all to go check out the new tapas menu at Keon's Bistro in the near future. We'll be right back. Thank you, Stacy. We're at 105 Washington Street in downtown Havel. We're open Monday through Saturday at 5 o'clock for dinner only. Uh, we're, we do our third Sunday of the month is the wine dinner, and we'd love to have you all. You can call us at 978-521-0112, and our website is keons.com. Welcome back to your chamber at work. My next guest is Leanne Eastman, with Pentucket Bank. She's the Assistant Vice President in charge of marketing and we are lucky enough to have her on the Chamber of Commerce Golf Tournament Committee. Thanks for being Thank here today, Leanne. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you coming and talking to us about the tournament. I know that uh, plans are well underway for this year's event and I noted before I, before I arrived this morning that the tournament's going to be in August this year. That's a first for... It is. Yeah, that's a first. Tell us a little bit about that change. Sure. So what we were looking at the calendar and uh, traditionally had always done um, the week after Labor Day, the Monday right. after Labor Day. But where Labor Day falls a little bit later this year, the committee thought it would be uh, a good idea to take advantage of the nice weather in August and um, hopefully transition everyone back from vacation a little early with our tournament on the 31st. So it's actually the Monday before Labor Day this year. I think that's probably wise since September gets so busy with people back to work, back to school, all of those uh, you know, meetings and, and new scheduling stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you'll see uh, a reward for that decision. Yeah. Um, tell the viewers where the tournament will take place and uh, a little bit more about the course. Sure. So we're going to be doing it once again at Havel Country Club. Um, we've been back at the Country Club for a few years now and they always treat us so well up there. They take great care of us. The course, um, from what I understand, I haven't played yet yeah. this year, but the course is already in meticulous condition. So they, they really do it, they do it well over there. Um, so registration will be starting at 11.30 that day and then we'll have a one o'clock shotgun. Excellent. So um, lunch will be served and then 
Um, when everyone comes off the golf course afterwards, we'll have our traditional um, dinner banquet and some raffle, silent auction, a few contests and some fun surprises and of course some really great gifts for everybody. I know it was so. a really fun day last year. Absolutely. Um, and I did note last year was my first year at that tournament yeah. and I did note that you serve both lunch and dinner, which yeah. is kind of unique for a tournament. It is, and you know we think it's a little added bonus, a little added bonus for everybody, especially where they're coming to register during the lunch hour. You know, most people have probably gone to work in the morning and right. then they're scooting out. So we figured it's a nice courtesy for them and a thank you for them being there to do a light lunch. And then we always have a snack cart and um, things going around on the course as well and some snacks in the goodie bags. Right. And then they come off the course, of course, very hungry and ready for dinner. So um, we serve, they put a great buffet out and um, everyone really enjoys the format. So Absolutely. Well. The food last year was outstanding. Uh, outstanding. Haverhill Country Club yep. absolutely outdid themselves. So let's see if they can do that again this There's year. No um, so you mentioned shotgun start. What's the format of play for the tournament? Um, the format is a scramble. So it's kind of a traditional um, fundraising type format for most nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, and people like that because it's an opportunity for, you know, some of the really experienced golfers to go out and um, have a really just kind of casual and enjoy the day. And then for some of the not as experienced golfers, it's a great way for them to play the course without the pressure of having to play their own ball the whole way through. And, right. Um, and it's, you know, it keeps the tournament moving as well so that it doesn't take too long to get through. Right. So. It helps those that don't have the straightest drive or the longest drive exactly. kind of stay, <laughs> stay with the pack. Exactly. <laughs> so this is the 24th annual golf tournament, which means it's been around a long time. Great longevity. Uh, what, but what's new and exciting for this year? Um, well, we're always looking to try to, you know, up our ante from last year. So we're, the committee is exploring some options for some prize holes, so some different contests and things going on out on the course throughout the day. So you never know what you might stumble upon if you're playing and you come on a hole. There may be some activities or something fun to do. Um, we always have some great po uh, partners and sponsors who have different tents along the way as well with some giveaways, goodies, snacks, that kind of thing. Um, we are looking at some great new gift ideas for all the players. Um, we have a really creative committee that comes with a lot of experience in golf and then also has have played in a lot of tournaments themselves so they know what they've really liked and what um, has served them well and so we're trying to bring some of those um, industry knowledge and expertise to our tournament to really uh, boost it up this year. So um, lots going on. We'll have a putting contest, of course the traditional closest to the pin, long drives, that kind of thing. Um, and then we always have a great silent auction as well. We have a lot of sports memorabilia and then certainly some really cool things donated from a lot of the chamber members and local businesses. So, right. And the committee will accept donations from those local businesses out Absolutely. there? Absolutely. And we have really reasonable sponsorship rates. Um, but all the information is right on the chamber's website. Right. So certainly anyone that's interested in getting involved um, can go right to the chamber site and see what all the opportunities are. So. It sounds like a fantastic day. And so uh, tell the golfers at home how they can register and... Yep. Um, remind yeah. them of the early bird. Absolutely. So we do have an early bird rate out there, which is a great bonus. Um, and we have some, you know, a little extra incentive too. So you can certainly go onto the Chamber's website at www.haverillchamber.com um, or certainly call the office and any of the, the wonderful staff there can assist you at 978-373-5663. Good memory. <laughs> um, and the prices include all everything that we just mentioned, right? Yep. It includes the lunch and the dinner yep. and the goodie bags. I think I heard that everybody's going to get a brand new golf glove this year. Yes, absolutely. We always we have a great partnership with Whirl Away and they come over and custom fit you for a new golf club. Uh, Mark's been great about that in the years past and everyone loves that. So um, there's reason enough to come on out. Exactly, so. exactly. Um, and certainly day of volunteers are welcome also. We have a great committee, but um, the more hands the better to make it run smoothly and um, it's a great day on the course. So. We'll and it can be a, a, the dinner buffet, as I recall from last year, is a great opportunity for some folks to come and network too. Absolutely. And I know that uh, the committee does make the dinner portion only available to those who maybe are not golfers mm -hmm. or who just can't make it for the better part of the day. Yep. So yep. the that's more the merrier. So hopefully, yeah. we'll either see you on the golf course or we'll see you afterwards for dinner and some fun. So. That sounds great. Anything else that the uh, that the viewers should know about the tournament? Oh, I just think the you know being the 24th year, the the longevity kind of speaks for itself. It's obviously um, served us well and been a great place for members and guests to come out and do some networking, have a great day on the course, and um, you know I think 24 years and running, it's 
There's got to be something good, so come on down well, and check it out. Well, kudos to the committee. Job well done. Thank Thanks you. for coming today, Leanne. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for watching this segment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your chamber at work. Next up, we have two guests from Opportunity Works, Deborah Andrews, who's the Director of Development, and John Guerin, the uh, Capital Campaign Director. We'll get to you in a minute, John. I know you've got a lot of things going on over there, but uh, first, Deborah, tell the viewers a little bit more about Opportunity Works and the mission of your organization. Sure. Opportunity Works is a 501c3 nonprofit that serves adults with disabilities throughout the Merrimack Valley. We started in Newburyport in 1974, serving a handful of people, and now we serve 245 individuals. We serve people with multiple um, complicated um, needs for support. Sure. We serve people who go out to work in the community, and we serve people in between. In such a needed service, really. There are so many people um, out there who are without support. So thank you for being a part of Haverhill, a greater Haverhill, Newburyport, and doing that. Um, and tell us a little bit more about, you know, the continued need out there, because I know that you've been running a capital campaign right. to try to expand uh, here in Haverhill. We have been in Haverhill since 1999. Right. We um, had a leased space. However, um, according to some of the um, statistics, we have increased in Massachusetts, people with disabilities has increased 100,000 people, which is 19% of the population, 19% more. So there are a few reasons for that, apparently. Uh, one is that with the medical care we have now, mm -hmm. people with um, acquired brain injuries right. live and um, have care and, and are able to do quite a bit. And number two is the people with autism on the autism spectrum. Sure. There are more diagnoses now. And the third is that during the economic downturn, people were leaving Massachusetts. Oh, right. But now they're not, returning. Now they're returning. They're staying. Families are staying. And uh, there are far more people to serve. Haverhill, there are a lot, there's a lot of need in Haverhill. We serve more people from Haverhill than any of our other communities. Um, and people want to live, uh, want to attend uh, classes and uh, services where they live. So it makes them feel like more part of their family, which they actually are because they'll go to work in Haverhill and they'll study in Haverhill. And, uh, yeah, and not only a part of their family, but a part of the community. Exactly. Right, which is so important. It is. It's important to the community as well as to the individual. Absolutely. We Absolutely. Um, John, so you have the capital campaign going on. You've got this brand new building that you guys will be uh, soon opening, I'm sure. Tell us uh, what kinds of funds are needed to uh, finish off that project. Well, the project that, that uh, currently stands is a uh, 37,000 square foot building. It is uh, directly behind and abutting our good friends and neighbors at Northern Essex Community College. And uh, we, are, we are currently occupying the building now, uh, although the building sort of on its, uh, I guess you'd say its shakedown crews. Uh, people are getting used to its staff and sure. participants and management are learning uh, together how to, how to use the building best. Uh, and there's still a ways to go. Uh, there, there are still uh, uh, ancillary uh, uh, portions of that project that need to be done. So there's still a need for fundraising. There's still a great need for fundraising. I should point I'm that sure out. I'm sure there is. Uh, we are in the third year of, a, of an ambitious three-year capital campaign. It's a $6.7 million project, and the capital campaign is seeking to raise $2 million of that. Uh, as, as we speak today, uh, our total fundraising is at uh, close to $1.1 million. So we've been very, very fortunate uh, that people have opened their hearts and their wallets for us uh, and because that's so important. And we understand there are a myriad of needs and a myriad right. of, of, of places where people can donate and contribute. But <clears throat> this is a very specific project. It is clearly a, a jewel in, in Haverhill, the mm -hmm. city of Haverhill's uh, burgeoning uh, crown. Uh, but it, it's great for the region. Uh, as Deborah said, the need is so great, and we serve directly 
uh, 19 different communities uh, running from uh, Methuen to the seashore and then, and, and then south to uh, places like Woburn, Essex, and Danvers. So it's, it's a fairly large part of uh, at least Essex County, and, and, uh, and, and that need is growing, as, as Deborah pointed out. Um, so this facility um, seeks to take care of that issue now and in the future. So it's not being built just as a stopgap measure, but something that uh, the Department of Developmental Services greatly supports. And that's what gave rise to this uh, very ambitious uh, expansion of our services and programs. And w I'm pleased as a former elected official that it's here in Haverhill and, right. and that, I, that I was asked to, to, to lead the charge on the capital campaign. Uh, but as I say, there's a ways to go. And uh, we, we're going to have not just uh, fundraising events as, as we have, but we, uh, we're out with meeting with people all the time and uh, trying to convince them that their uh, charitable dollar, their, their, their giving, uh, can make such an impact with our particular project. And it sounds like it has already, but there is definitely still a ways to go. Oh, yes. Um, with the opening of the new building, how, how, how will you do the official opening? Will there be some sort of celebration? What's the timing for that, do you, if you have that worked out at this point? Well, I think we can call it a celebration <laughs> at this point after two long and hard years of, uh, of working towards it. We have a very active, uh, very engaged um, board of directors. Our senior management, our executive director, Jane Harris Fail, who uh, I'm proud to say is a high school classmate of mine. She's a hilly, uh, along with myself. Um, so we, we have a, they have a, a great involvement and, and great dedication uh, to the project. We're working on a celebration right now. Of course, it's difficult to coordinate dates, as you know. All the schedules, <laughs> I'm sure, yes, and, all, and everybody's yes. schedules. But we want to make sure that uh, people who have championed the project are, are able to be there. Our state legislators, uh, chief among them, uh, Representative Brian Dempsey, who sure. has been such a great help, uh, Senator. Uh, Katie Ives um, and others, the, the, the mayor, of course. And so getting all of those folks together and getting all of our folks together uh, is very important to us. But also we want people who have given to the project to come and celebrate what they've created. Because really it's from their, it's from their right. giving and their contributions uh, that this building uh, was made possible. And to, we're always open to giving tours to anyone at any time. But we'd like to do something with an open house as well, right. uh, as well as a ribbon cutting ceremony with the chamber. We've turned to the chamber for, for help and we're discussing oh, this we're with you. Oh, we're thrilled to do it. <laughs> well, we're, we're thrilled to have you to do it, believe me. Uh, but we, we want to have, uh, we feel, I feel especially, the more we can get people to see hands on what they've created right. and to see what goes on in that building every day. I, I, I've told people, I don't know how many times, that if you're having kind of a down day, give me a call or give Deborah a call. Ask, ask to come take a tour and see the happy faces and, and the wonderful things that go on at Opportunity Works every single day. And you can't help but walk out of there with a bounce in your step. And, and can you imagine having a room named for you? <laughs> for, and well, we can talk an about honor. that as well. What an honor. <laughs> what an honor. Uh, Deborah, with this new building, obviously you're going to have expanded services. So. You know, what does the new campus bring to um, Greater Haverhill in terms of, you know, expanded um, social and economic benefits? The first thing I want to say is Haverhill has embraced Opportunity Works and the participants of our programs, and we're very grateful. It brings, as we talked about before, people are able to connect in their home community. Um, we have people who are working in the community. Mm -hmm. We have people who are uh, volunteering in the community. We've had people volunteering with the uh, Haverhill um, Flowers uh, Flower Association, and they planted at the Citizen Center in different places. We have an art program, so it's an infusion of more culture in more ways with more people so that the community can understand what our individuals have to offer. Right. Not to take, but to give. I think that's so important. A, it, lot, of, a lot of people 
across the country miss that fact. Yes. You know, they think a nonprofit is there with their hand out um, and that they that it's not a two-way street, but it definitely is a two-way street. You know, I it's, see organizations like yours providing great supports and great you. give back to the community. Thank you. And the individuals themselves are involved in the decisions and it's person-centered and we have one young woman who wants wants to do all sorts of um, fundraisers for people who are not as well off as she. Oh, sure. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. Opportunity Works has a great reputation with funders, with parents and guardians, and with the people that we serve. And we have a lot of volunteers because of that. And we, and we thank our donors as well. And we're proud to have you here in Haverhill with us. And unfortunately, we are out of time for today. But I want to thank you, Deborah and John, for being here with me today. Uh, we, we look forward to the big celebration where we get to tour uh, the new facility. And um, we invite others at home to come on out. We will be getting information out to the public shortly about the days and times for that. Um, but definitely check in with Deborah or John get a tour uh, and find out a little bit more about what they're doing from the inside. You won't be disappointed. Once again, I want to thank you all for watching Your Chamber at Work, and we hope to see you next month. <music>